Well, just over a half a year ago, a Senate committee recommended pot be made legal and distributed, much like booze is available at the liquor store or tobacco at your local corner store. Enforcement officials in this country were outraged at that suggestion and are pushing the government not to decriminalize without having a strong drug strategy in place. It should be properly advocated in the U.S. <laughs> Isn't that part of the problem, though? The government hasn't got the message out there. There is a strong belief in the public that we're decriminal. And, and, and the concern is decrim for them means no more crime. So uh, they, it's so it, it was not properly explained to them what Canada will will do. And the the the, the prohibition laws and uh, you've, in the United States there is a variety, as you know. The criminal law is a state jurisdiction, not a federal jurisdiction. So you have a variety in, uh, in a, a, a wide spectrum of, of type of criminal law dealing with with, uh, with illegal substance. And, and you already have real decriminalization in some states. Here in Canada, we're going to have depenalization, smaller sanctions for an illegal action. Is it really necessary that Canada should seek the U.S.'s approval for what we're doing on our pot, well, that's on a our pot strategy? On everything. Well, yeah. The Americans don't the come US... to Canada to, to, to check out whether what they should be doing on their gun strategy. But the amount to be decriminalized and the uh, severity of the penalties uh, contained in the bill are subject to uh, serious negotiation and amendment, or do you think that that's the heart of the bill and uh, any amendments would be more on the periphery? Um, look, Don, the committee recommended 30 grams, uh, under 30 grams in your possession to be decriminalized, as well as one to three plants, um, getting tougher on the grow-ups and what have you. Um, I'm quite prepared to listen to testimony about why this is the right level, not the right level, that the ministers proposed on 15 grams. Um, we'll see, uh, see what uh, the experts tell us in terms of applying the law. This courthouse, a judge's ruling that gives new hope to pot smokers across the country. The judge has said that it's not illegal uh, to possess marijuana, that there's no statutory prohibition on the possession of marijuana in, in Ontario, at least. Now, Mike, uh, what's going on here? I wish I knew, Dan. This is wild. The Supreme Court uh, a couple of weeks ago refused to hear a case saying the law is in flux. They want to wait until Parliament speaks. Uh, now we have this judge down in Windsor, yet in other parts of the country there are judges and police forces that are going full steam ahead. It's supposed to do it this week. It was postponed to sometime before the adjournment in, in June. We'll see. Uh, I probably by, by Christmas we'll have a, 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 new, a new amendment. Uh, 30, minute, uh, 30 grams, which could be uh, anywhere from 40, 45 joints. Uh, that kind of thing is, uh, is not minor possession. But what would concern me more than that is that if it were 30 grams, let's say for instance, and somebody goes into a courtroom with 32, 35, 40 grams, uh, will the judges and the lawyers in those courtrooms across this country apply the law? Or will we start on another vicious circle again, uh, saying, well, uh, you know, maybe we should move this to 35 and 40, we got our, our foot in the door, and so on. So I want some assurances from the legal industry out there and the judges in those courtrooms across the country that, that whatever comes out of this, it will be applied and we won't go through this nonsense of judicial uh, lawmaking. Yeah, I, I would think... A ruling by a Windsor judge just this past week ruled that 30 grams of possessing 30 grams or less of marijuana is uh, no longer valid in Ontario. If I light up a joint here, right here and now, what are you going to do to me? Well, actually, the laws are still in effect, and that ruling is being appealed by the government. As a matter of fact, the Minister of Justice and his department are arguing right now in other courts. To, uh, there is a little bit of ambiguity because of the law, but because of the rulings of these courts, but basically, the uh, we're looking at the penalties, but I, I disagree uh, substantially with Patty that the government followed through with our, our work on the drug committee. There is no national drug strategy, at least acceptable to my point of view, uh, merely throwing millions of dollars at two departments and saying fix the problem. That wasn't what I was looking for. So a decimal poll conducted in September of 2003 showed that uh, a majority of Canadians favored marijuana decriminalization, while a significant number agreed there should be complete legalization. When it's illegal marijuana, people are smoking on the street, acting differently, behaving in a totally relaxed and tension-free uh, city environment where they don't fear getting stopped by police or even questioned or certainly arrested. 
And that's, you know, four million people in that city alone, and there's coffee shops showing up in St. Catharines, London, Toronto. The country is changing, except for the six provinces that haven't had the law acknowledged in that province that marijuana is legal. It's legal in Saskatchewan, it's legal in Alberta, it's legal in Manitoba, it's legal everywhere in Canada, but unfortunately a court has to say so. Okay, this Thursday coming up on Parliament Hill, and you know what, I don't exactly know how it's going to work, but I want everybody to come, be there, bring banners that say keep marijuana legal, because marijuana is legal, and if the, if the people on Parliament Hill, if the government would just not push any more court cases, if they would not bring any new legislation in, marijuana is legal and will remain that way. Here we are talking to Mark Emery right after the summer of legalization, or I guess fall of legalization tour at the Parliament Hill, the cherry on the Sunday. How's it going, Mark? Oh, it's a great day. <coughs> we had fabulous, beautiful sunny weather after it had rained early in the afternoon. Uh, we've got a crowd of about four to 500 people at its peak. And Don't smart, start to smoke right away. We're not legalizing it. We're decriminalizing it. Nothing. We're going to make that the winter of our discontent. And actually, I've looked at this decision. This is what the Ontario Court of Appeal decision is bad, terrible, all over. The government tonight is sh drinking champagne and celebrating. They probably called strippers and they're having a great old time. They got everything they wanted on a silver platter from the Ontario Court of Appeal, including stuff that's not even lawful. So I'm appealing it to the Supreme Court. That, that is. For a while, their pot possession was decriminalized in parts of Canada, but then, well, then a new court ruling left things up in the air. So what does the law say now? Uh, is it legal in a home or something? I don't know, just a fine or something? We don't know. Okay. Yeah, no one seems to know, so we'll try to set the record straight, so to speak. The Ontario Court of Appeal originally suspended the possession law, and they reiterated it here, so it wasn't like we made it up, it was a fluke, right? Uh, and it, it's, the possession law on marijuana was suspended from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. A declaration of invalidity was given. That means it's no longer around, cannot be brought back. Bobs are a multi-million dollar industry in B.C. Last March, Surrey RCMP reported a huge problem in their community. We estimate that there are between 3,500 and 4,500 grow ops active in the city of Surrey right now. The bust comes a week into the RCMP's crackdown on grow ops. The Mounties are partnering with the military and municipal police forces in what's called an eradication team. Both men arrested have been charged with producing a c controlled substance. I mean, for a long time, San Francisco was ahead of Vancouver when it came to a tolerant environment for marijuana. I was just in Vancouver last week, you know, and I think that there are some places where the marijuana use is a little more open, but I have to tell you, I did not see hordes of American tourists flocking up to Vancouver for that reason. I would say that any possible effect on U.S. tourism to Canada is going to be a desk of blip.